Okay, here we are on the brew day. Gives me a chance to verify the findings we had on the refractometer versus the hydrometer in part one of this little series. This is a partial mash that I'm doing. There's going to be a video on that too you might want to check out. But it's nice because it gives me multiple points at which I can take samples to make our comparisons. I have the mini mash output here and I have a very low gravity. So I'll take the numbers on that. I've got the uh, starting gravity, which is the point at which we added in our extracts and we're going ahead and starting to boil. So I'll have a point with that. And then I'll have this um, original gravity once the boil's over, which again, I can compare the numbers on that. So we'll have three different uh, cases that we're gonna try. I'm gonna take the sample immediately on the refractometer from the hot uh, kettle. I'll wait a few minutes and take it again. I'll wait a few more minutes and take it again and see what the effect of time has on our measurement as the work cools down on the refractometer. With each and every case, I'm gonna take enough sample for the hydrometer so I can measure and compare both side by side. So we'll be looking at the consistency and accuracy of the refractometer versus the hydrometer. Should be a lot of fun. I think it should be helpful. Stay tuned. Okay, we are all set with our three samples. I've recorded the various numbers using the refractometer. I have these three samples, one just off the grain from the mini mash, one the grain plus the extract at the pre-boil, and the little one up front there is our post-boil original gravity sample. They've all cooled to room temperature here. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the hydrometer. I'll log the numbers and then share that with you. So stand tight. Here's the first one. This is the mini mash output. Let's see if we can take a good look at that. I'm going to call that 10, uh, 10, 14, 10, 15, somewhere in there. Let me go ahead and write that down. Here is the pre-boil numbers. I'm going to call that 1050. You can see it a little better with this guy. Ten fifty it is. And here is our post boil. Let's see if I can get this in front here. And I'm gonna call that ten and I'm gonna call that ten fifty four. All right, I'm gonna record these and then we'll see how things shook out. Are in, and I have to say they're quite interesting. With the mini mash, came out with a reading of four bricks on the refractometer. Hydrometer came in at 1.015. So you can see the conversion from bricks to gravity gives us a number 1.016. So right on the money. Also, the repeatability in this measurement, regardless of how quickly I took the sample, put it right on the slide, or let it cool a little bit. Very, very consistent, which I found very encouraging. Then I had the pre-boil gravity reading here. The bricks came out to be 12. I measured it a variety of different times over the course of a half hour. So plenty of time for the temperature to be changing. I had a range of 11 and a half to 13. Now, it was most consistent when I just take the sample with the pipette, put the sample on the refractometer, wait a few seconds, take the reading, consistently came out at the 12 figure. I kind of had to do some out of the normal things to push it into these um, outlying areas. Things such as opening and closing the window on my slide, um, things that you would normally wouldn't do. So again, 
I'm convinced that taking the sample, putting it on the refractometer, I say here, wait for 20 to 30 seconds, take your reading, and the results are going to be good. By the way, from the accuracy point of view, hydrometer 1.050, 12 bricks converts to 1.049. So again, spot on. The final one is the OG, so the post-boil measurement. Same thing, came out 13.8 bricks. I, again, try to force things to cause my reading to drift more than it, it normally would have. And with that, I had the hydrometer reading of 1.054, 13 bricks, 13.8 bricks converted is 1.056. So again, all within the uh, measurement error limitations of the equipment we're using here, as well as our uh, visual perception of where exactly the hydrometer is floating. I know we've all uh, been there with that. But the bottom line to me is this particular exercise validates the use of the refractometer. In fact, it gives me much more confidence now than I had before. So I'll probably do this again the next time I brew, just to really reinforce that. But again, everything we're seeing, I think we're spot on with the tool that we're using when compared to the time-tested hydrometer. Hope this helps you. I'd be very interested to hear your findings with refractometers that you're using.